To understand Islam and the Muslim world more, buy my book The Curse of God Why I Left Islam. Available in all your favorite online bookstores. All right, folks, this is Harris Sultan, the ex Muslim atheist, and welcome to another episode of Sultan's House of Sin. I've often heard a lot of people say, oh, Muhammad Hijab, Muhammad Hijab, a lot of warriors of uh, Allah come and say, oh, Muhammad Hijab, he'll sort you out. Uh, some people say, intellectually, he'll defeat me. Some people say, physically, he'll beat me up. And you know, all, ty- all types of childish things people say. And physically, he might actually be able to beat me. You know, like I'm only six foot and you know, I'm only 85 kilos. Um, he 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 seems like a bigger boy, so yeah, he he probably he probably kicked my ass. But as far as intellectually challenging him is concerned, or speaking with him, you know, he he's he's someone that I just can't take anything seriously because he's been proven time and time again that he's an intellectually dishonest person. He, um, I'm a poor cosmic skeptic. He fell in that trap. He edited the videos. They, they muted his mic. And then they cut out those bits. Cosmic Skeptics got a video in detail on that. Um, he was giving the benefit of the doubt to these guys, Muhammad Hijab and whatever the organization was that organized the debate. They didn't let him have the footage, send him copyrights, like they made it quite clear afterwards. And then Muhammad Hijab for over a year kept saying, oh, my Muslim destroyed an atheist. And he would put heavily edited videos. He would only put his clip. And right when is about to talk about uh, Quran 434 wife beating worse. His mic cuts out. And, you know, it could have picked it from the other mics, but they didn't put anything. It's like silent, almost silent, you know, unintelligible. You can't hear it. Same thing happens when Muhammad Hijab does. Um, he, a mic, something, you know, mic doesn't pick up what he was saying, but then the surrounding mic was turned up. So the voice, the sound was picked up from the other mic and then that was put in. And then funnily enough, he, the Jewid is this is a problem with people who are, who are locked in an ideology that they have no freedom to do anything. Even a genuine mistake can't be forgiven. So you know he, he was doing a talawat of some Quranic verse, and <laughs> and uh, he got it wrong. So what they did they re- they redid the whole thing. Like this is from an actual debate. Like you can go and watch my debate with with um, um, with this his butahir guy. And imagine I say something wrong, and I go back to the, to the, to the. If I can't go to the university, but then I replicate the environment that it might look like that I'm at the same place. He did that, put the coat on, but you know they say in Urdu, "Nakal ke liye bhi akal ki zarurat meaning even to cheat, you need you need wisdom. <laughs> so, so you know he messed up the microphone. In the original video was under the lapel, or the other one was on the tie or something. So, so that's an atheist. That's something that is his rival. Okay, even though you you don't do that to your rivals. Uh, I've never ever edited people's footages. I've you know even even when I put up footages of people, I ask them, I ask for their permission if you know when I'm putting excerpts out because I know some of these excerpts. Even though you've given your response, then the person who's meant to start a new argument might still respond to something so so people can always accuse oh you didn't let him say that um so i always whenever i put an excerpt out i did it with mufti abulay i did it with hamza ali abasi i always ask them can i put this up so that's how i behave now that's my integrity but this guy on the other hand hijab he edits the videos he cuts people's mics out dishonest severely dishonest guy but not only just to atheists he's also dishonest to his own fellow muslim brothers so recently he conducted he interviewed Yasir Qadi. <laughs> yes, Yasir Qadi is no stranger to um to controversy. Those of you who don't know, actually no, I'll actually it would be in the video. I'll play I'll play a little clip for you. Yasir Qadi he's an esteemed scholar, you know. I, I mean there's the reason why even us atheists listen to him sometimes. And he makes sometimes he, he says really silly things like the zombies and you know, um, um, I think zombies is probably the most uh, stupidest mistake that he made. <laughs> even though he covered his he covered his ground, he said, "You know, that's not what I'm saying. It's some other scholar is saying that the yajuj majuj could be zombies." Um, but other than that, he has uh, accepted evolution. 
He's tried to educate Muslims on evolution. He has shown that there are problems in certain aspects of Islamic theology. He also said that he had doubts, although he said it privately, but then his own Muslim brothers, like Muhammad Ajab, leaked his emails. This is how they're devouring each other. You know, um, you disagree with me, you're, you're kafir, you've done shirk, you should be exposed, and if they could kill them, they would probably do that too, as they've been doing that for 1,400 years in the desert. Anyway, so, so let's get back to the point. So he, what he did was, he interviewed him, and the interview streamed both live on uh, Muhammad Hijab's and Dr. Yasser Qadi's YouTube page. On Dr. Yasser Qadi's YouTube, it's an hour and 50 minutes long. And on Muhammad Hijab, on his YouTube, it's an hour and 15. He actually cut out 40 minutes or 30 minutes of the part where Yasser Qadi was explaining the problems with the topic of preservation of the Quran. Frankly, it never was a big issue for me because I never left Islam because of that issue. I wasn't even aware of that. This is such a well-kept secret. Outside the general academia, people didn't even know that. I, I had just assumed that Quran is actually preserved from the times of Muhammad. But there's still so many other mistakes in the Quran that, you know, <laughs> you can, you can, there's still plenty of material for you to become an atheist. And that's what happened to me. So that's why I never really cared about it, because even if it was preserved, let's just say it was perfectly preserved. In my view, it's still no big deal. Who cares? Um, you know, we, we have we have uh, preserved documents. Uh, we have the verbatim Julius Caesar's accounts still available. Yes, they're not memorized by everyone because Julius Caesar didn't form a new religion, even though he actually did call himself a god. But the co calling yourself a god in, in, the, in the ancient Roman world was, was different to how we view gods today. So he says that there's a preservation issue and the answers are not easy. And he admitted that. Muhammad Hijab conveniently just took it out. So let me, let me play that to you, what Yasir Qadi said. So one of the brothers, um, yani he did something, again, unethical. Uh, he was expelled from the list, and the list was basically banned because of that, stopped because of that. He couldn't refute to my argument, so he sent it to uh, one of your madkhalis in, uh, uh, in uh, England. And so then, of course, this madkhali gave it to the other one, and so obviously, yani everything, you know, uh, you know, all whatever broke loose. But again, this was not something I brought up in public, and I would never bring it up in public. And I don't think it is wise to bring it up in public. Every single student of knowledge knows who studies Ulum al Quran that the most difficult topics are Ahruf and Qiraat and the concept of Ahruf and the reality of Ahruf and the relationship of the Rahmanic Mus'haf with the Ahruf and the preservation of the Ahruf. Is it one? Is it three? Is it seven? And the relationship of the Qiraat to the Ahruf. This is a topic that when you're the beginning, beginning student of knowledge, you're like, what is all of this going on here? When you go a little bit more, you learn to simply memorize what your teachers say and regurgitate it out. And you don't fully comprehend. When you do a deep dive is when things get very, very awkward and difficult. And this isn't new. This is from the time of the Sahaba. In the Sahih or the Hassan Hadith of Ubayb al the Hadith of the Ahruf, that when the Prophet mentioned the issue of Ahruf and that there are different Ahruf and whatnot, this is in the version of Muslim Imam Ahmad, Ubayb al Ka'ab says, authentic Hadith, in my heart, a doubt came that I hadn't had about Islam since the days of Jahiliyyah. This is not a joke, brothers and sisters. The issue of Ahruf and Qiraat caused confusion to somebody whom the Prophet said, if you want to listen to the Quran directly, listen to Ubay. Ubay is not some even average Sahabi. He is the Qari of the Quran. He is the master. He is who he is. And he goes, what is all of this stuff? And the process the prophet, put, it, yeah. put his hand and then he goes, ha, it all went away. Now for the first time, I'm telling you here, what was the crisis? I mentioned it, referenced it, but I never explicitly said it. Why didn't I say it? Because it should not be said in public. But unfortunately, these brothers, because they released the emails, so then I have to then get, get it. This was the issue. That the issue of Ahruf and preservation and Qiraat and relationships between them these are very, very difficult issues. And the most advanced of our scholars, they're not quite fully certain how to... All right. So 
basically what he said here, he said, I had doubts when he was studying Islam as an ac academic. Those of you who are not Muslim, it's a, and as I said, it wasn't that much of an issue for me because I became an atheist before it even, I, I became aware of that. So as a Muslim, you are told time and time and time again by your, by everyone around you that every word in the Quran is the literal word of God. And I'm sure some of you white people would have heard that too, um, that it's a literal word of God. And it's free from any contamination. The biggest case that they built against Jews and the Christians that they that they contaminated, they tampered with the word of um, the word of God in Bible. And you know, obviously, Bible Christians don't even claim that it's the literal word of God. But Muhammad, at that time, built that argument. So, when you believe that everything, literal word of God, the way it was written, then you go, oh, okay. That's it. Hadith is different. Hadith is like, okay, 200 years of ayat, and, you know, so he said, she said, therefore there could be something wrong, bad ones or not. They don't have the same respect as the Quran. Quran is a literal word of God. Yasir Khadi is not talking about his journey. He went to a university, I think he went to Medina University. And he said, oh, now I became aware it's actually, you know, there, there are some contaminations in this supposed word of God. I'll show you some examples. Those are actually very minor details, which are, which you would imagine that um, that, you know, anyone from uh, any text that's that old, something like this is likely to happen. No big deal. So there are two ver types of Quran that are very popular, although there's seven altogether. But Hafs is the major one, which is 95%. And Versh is another one, 3%. That's in the Central Asian country. So he here are some differences in uh, in uh, Hafs version. It says sovereign of the day of recompense and king of the day of recompense. Um, the other one is they think to deceive. In this one, it says they seek to deceive. So here they say habitually used to lie, and here it says habitually used to tell lies. So again, you know, the meaning is not really changing. So here it says Yalamun Talamun, Yakfur Nakfur. Yakfur, here he says he will then forgive. Um, and not for it says we will then forgive. So, so there's a bit of a difference there that we will then forgive. Here he says he will then forgive, but it still means the God, right? Same Yalam and Talamun, you do, they do. Here you will not be asked and do not ask. This one is actually a little different, but, but you see the Arabic text, the script is written the same way. And most of this happened when Zayd Zabaz were added, you know, these little things. These little things matter a lot because they make the pronunciation. <clears throat> this is wow. And if you put a zabar on it, if you put a pesh on it, or if you put a zair in it, it will have a different meaning. Um, and, and, you know, th th so these are all those little differences. This is my favorite one. It says, uh, masakin and masakin. So, you know, it says feeding a poor person, if you break your fast or something. And on the other hand, it says, of feeding poor people. So there's a singular and plural problem. So you might argue that okay, these are little these are little differences. It's not that big a deal, and I agree. As an atheist, as a skeptic, it doesn't make any difference to me because originally in my head I'm already quite confident it's not a literal word of God. Even if it was a literal word of God, even then, in those times, contaminations could have happened. No big deal to me. But for a Muslim, why it bothers them so much is because if you make a claim it's a literal word of God and this is it, God is not going to send any more prophets because He said. I have taken responsibility for my word, I will protect it. Then it can't be from any difference. And you know, when I was growing up, I used to even hear that uh, not even a Zayr Zabar is out of place. <clears throat> That's literally, it is out of place. So when Muslims find out, whoa, so God's word is contaminated as well, then they kind of go, what else is contaminated? What else? So, you know, it kind of, I don't know why, as I said, I, I still fail to see it. The why this triggers more than the sun orbiting the 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 earth worse, for instance. You know, I I, I don't understand. Or the wife beating for women or sex slaves. Qadi was just sharing that he confided with a fellow Muslim that this is what made him uh, doubt his faith. And as you say, it's it's a bit hypocritical to say I would never say that in public. But fair enough, we say certain things in public, but certain things we don't say in public, and we say them privately. And a person of good integrity would never leak that information, right? I mean, I even, as I said, even uh, people I speak with who I'm not intellectually in in line with or or in, or in agreement with, I would not 
you know, release their information, what they've confided to me with. In, um, they released it. All shit hit the fan, and then he had to explain, no, 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 this was back in the day. But then he says that there are problems in this that the traditional worldview is not correct. And you know, I've heard David Han this point of view again. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's not. I can accept all of these traditional buttons or reasons why it happened. You know, because people, David Ramdi, for instance, says that people became obsessed with Prophet Muhammad. So he, so people tried to imitate him. Sometimes he spoke in the Medinan dialect. Sometimes he spoke in Meccan dialect. So when he would speak, you know, and, you know, like, for example, we do it. We, we, I don't know whether you do it or not. When I'm in England, I'm trying to imitate English accent. <laughs> and I'm doing a pretty, I, I do a pretty bad job. But anyway, so I, so, so I would, and if you're in America, you, you, you might tell them, I, I can't do this. You know, it's like in a bad effort, but whatever. So, you know, but then can't and can't might be written differently or might, and now people are pronouncing them because, again, most of it is transferred orally. So now they will write it differently. And as I said, in Arabic, you have to put Zayr Zabar on top of the, on top of alphabets. So they sound different. So can't and can't will have a different Zayr Zabar in Arabic. And that's what happened. That's the tradition. That's one of the explanations they give. They say, okay, but again, if we accept that, then it means that your claim, your primary claim that it's a literal word of God, God has taken responsibility of it, blah, 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 blah. Then you have to drop that claim because, you know, why could God, God can't even, couldn't even stop from Masakin to Maskin? And this Hafs I showed you is 95%. That's also thanks to the work of great Muslims who in 1929 or 1919 or 1914, something in the early part of the 20th century, they standardized this version of, of, uh, of the Quran. Another fun fact is the Hafs version, the guy Hafs, who actually compiled this in this form, hadiths that were attributed to him are all discarded as they are unreliable. <laughs> it's just a fun fact that the Quran, which is supposed to be more important, that we've adopted of Hafs, this guy Hafs, but the hadith, guy Hafs, are unreliable. <laughs> so anyway, so let, let's have a last um, next clip and... And I'll wrap it up and then we'll go to your calls. And by the way, this is now a well-known open secret amongst many Muslim graduate students and, and, and academics around the world. And yeah. this is well-known. Traditional understandings of Ahruf and Qiraat cannot answer some of these pressing questions that are now being poked by our uh, people outside of, by our academics, not our, by their academics outside of the faith tradition. You see, in a Muslim environment, there's always some respect that we have for the Quran. We should in a Muslim environment, we'll press a little bit and then we'll say, okay, khalas, sami'na wa ta'na. And that's great, alhamdulillah. When you go to academia, they don't have that red line. And they're going to just, you know, the, 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 the famous story of the emperor with no clothes. They're going to just point out, no, that doesn't make any sense. Well, that's not true. And this and that. And they'll bring issues, which I'm not going to mention explicitly, that you know are true because they're in your own books. They're not inventing anything new. They'll bring you riwayat and they'll bring you athar and then you add to that very well-known issues of I don't even want to be explicit. And then you bring on top of that makhdutat. And then and then. And it's very clear to you and to every single very advanced student and specialist that the standard narrative has holes in it. That's what I'm going to say. The standard narrative does not answer some very pressing questions. Okay? This is what I'm going to say. Okay. So look at this. This is... He's open... So he's saying publicly that there are... You know, this is a secret society that the scholars are aware of what the problems are, but, you know, ooh, we're not going to discuss them publicly because publicly we're going to give them the sugar pill that is say, literal word of God is preserved, just take my word for it. But deep down inside, we know that there is there are a little bit changes. You know, it's just drop the other idea. Just drop that. It's a perfect, just say it's a perfect word, word, word of idea, the work of God. But, you know, things can happen. Things can change. That's why I dropped the claim, but I think it's in the Quran as well that I will take responsibility. Yeah, it is a tough one for him. But he, you know, he said openly that we'll speak privately. And I think in the later on in the video, he also said uh, Muhammad Hijab asked him another question: Would you remember if you, because you, Ayaz Al-Qadi is a Hafiz, meaning he's memorized the whole Quran. He said, if I gave you a plain piece of paper, would you be able to write the Quran in it? And he said, I'm not. Gonna, I can't give you yes or no answer. I'll give you the details off camera. What are these details? You know, what is this secret society? 
Muslims love this Illuminati thing. Well, bro, guys, this is your own Illuminati. You have your own secret society of Muslim scholars um, trying to keep you in the dark and trying to solve the problems for you about the religion. Just, you know, just share it to the world, whatever that is. And that's what we're doing. That's why an ordinary ex-Muslim like me can really, you know, people like us can really silent silence uh, people like these great so-called great scholars because these are very simple problems you can't they're admitting it themselves that there are problems and i think this is why yasser Qadi tries to be as intellectually honest as possible and this is why muhammad hijab said you know let me take this out that will that will damage the faith of so many of our muslim brothers so that's the character of your muhammad hijab not only he edits the videos of uh, his rivals, but also of his allies. He even made a Facebook post and he said, if Yasir Qadi says something that is outside of the ijma, outside of the consensus of the scholars, then he will be refuted. You will be refuted. <laughs> so, anyway, so, so that's the character of Muhammad Hijab. All the Muhammad Hijab fanboys, you know, this guy says, I, I, if you watch all my videos, I barely use the word liar, or deceitful, because I gen, gen, I generally, genuinely give these people a benefit that, you know, they might be thinking that way. They might be legitimately thinking that way. But people like Muhammad Hijab and Zakir Naik are the two people. I think they're deliberate liars and misleaders and they are deceitful. All right. <laughs> Muhammad Hijab didn't edit out the part of the video. It was abrogated. That's kind of true. <laughs> Whatever whatever the Lord Muhammad Hijab seems fit uh, and whatever he decides later on, obviously the later one takes precedence over his previous quotes. This is how they are. Oh, my bro, video is... To help me produce more videos like these, support me on Patreon or PayPal.